Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just but, a magnet. Yeah, just a magnet. Come on, Cam, last year, we, we said probably 150, mid-150. Yeah. Dane Doe from the morning come out with that nine-pointer. Here, here steps out this 90-inch eight. <laughs> like, yeah. Ah. I'm like, okay, well, you're still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then out steps like another 90-inch eight-pointer. Yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> I'm like deer right there. Yeah, like and he's 30 already yards. thirty yards. Yeah, he he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been had a buck down at one forty in the afternoon, back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 245, 24 yard shot. Sent the combat veteran, and I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's just almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you killed that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops. Sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast, coming in your ear holes with another giant deer story. This deer is so big, it's not going to fit in your ear holes. It's going to be physically possible. <laughs> <laughs> so stretch those ear holes, lube them up, give yourself a wet willy, whatever it takes to get ready for this story, because here we go. <laughs> We're talking to Matt Brunswick, who killed a 252-inch deer from Ohio last year. Um, you might have seen the pick online, absolute crazy six and a half year old giant. Um, if you haven't seen it, check out our Instagram and or Facebook, and there's a picture there of him. Huge jump from five to six, really cool story. Um, a lot of a lot of good details, and we just kind of go down in his hunting career for the past like ten years, and dude's had a lot of success, and kind of where he's seen success, and uh, where he's had luck and not had luck so um, we're going to get into the people that make this possible we're going to get in the show do you have the suicide hotline prevention number yeah the suicide prevention hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 um, guys go ahead and share that we've shared it on our story multiple times so um, just go ahead and get that out there because uh, most people that need help aren't going to be willing to talk about it usually with somebody and uh, like, you'd have to be really super close. So, um, but there might be more op optimal to uh, do it themselves. So go ahead and share that. And you never know, you might be able to save somebody's life. That is true. Um, do you have Exodus trail cams? Yeah, guys. Uh, like we said here, uh, it was probably uh, three weeks, a month ago, um, getting some cameras out for some turkeys. So we got them out and see into uh, some couple strut zones. And uh, we got the render on the absolute money spot going to the roost. Absolute. The birds are always there. Like it's not, not ever there. So um, we're getting some picks at night knowing that the birds are going to be there in the morning. And uh, that renders out there just being solid, just like it was in deer season. So nothing to worry about with the five-year warranty behind that product. And uh, you can check that out at exodusoutdoorgear.com. Yep. Um, I'm going to try to get a couple out myself some couple mobiles i think this because i ain't got nothing to do this weekend i can drive to a couple of them short walk just stick them up as long as the farmer don't diss the fields i'll be pretty solid <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> all right so that means the yeah. farmer's disc in the field yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right i'm gonna cover last breath uh, like like we said the last few weeks you guys been listening we're covering the launch party that's coming up here real quick in july um this week, we're going to talk about the free beer. So last week and the week before, we talked about the films and we talked about the free gear. Um, why you guys are enjoying this free event where you get to watch these badass hunting films with the chance to win this badass free hunting gear, you're also going to drink cold beer. So this is like a deer hunter redneck's dream right now. You got yes. entertainment. 
you might win some stuff for free. Everybody loves free shit. And you got cold beer. So um, last year, we absolutely drained them a beer. They said they're going to have double the amount this year. So um, you guys show up to the show at the Adler Theater. You're going to get free beer. Um, and then also the after party effect. So you get you know, go to the films. Um, a lot of people stay in a hotel up there. And you're going to be able to go out and, you know, maybe you watch the film and you want to talk to Garrett. You want to talk to Grant or Jesse. They're going to be there. You can go talk to these guys. Um, they're going to be just like another buddy that you had. You never met him. First time we, we met him, we went out with him that night and we had a hell of a time partying. So uh, yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember we walked out of that bar and we were out in the parking lot and we're like, man, this is where we want to be. This is <laughs> who we want to be around. So we just tell right then that we we're going to vibe for a long time. So, and we'll be out drinking and partying. So if you guys do end up making it to the show and want to come hang out with us, say what's up, make sure and run us down. We'll be around somewhere. Um, we'll be probably the loudest, rowdiest part <laughs> in the corner. That'd be, that'd be us. But uh, that's just another great thing that happens at the, the launch party. So, yep. do you have do and, and Logan shot a turkey today. Yeah, I know. So yeah, that's awesome. congrats yeah. to her. Yeah, that yeah. was awesome. So Another Logan's uh, starting that. off third season with a bang. Yeah. With a bang. So do you have next level deer supplements? Yeah, I do. Uh, this week, we're going to give out a tip here. Um, this is straight from the man himself, Nate Clark. And uh, Nate says to try and keep your mineral sites away from cedars and pines. They, uh, the soil around them areas is usually more bitter, which can keep the deer from hitting the mineral. So we need the deer to consume the mineral and, uh, their products. So try to avoid them areas and, uh, we'll, we'll come at you next week, hopefully with another tip and, uh, hopefully, cause this is the time to get that stuff out and get going. Fawns are going to be dropping. We need the does getting their uh, milk in and get a good supply and get healthy and get that fawn start off on the right foot. Yeah. That fawn could be a 130. You get it off on the right foot. Could be a 170. Never know. Right. So start those pumping those steroids into those young ones as quick as you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, like I said, well, I really enjoyed this episode. Matt's a great dude. We also have Ben on here. We almost forgot to mention from the bow hunting league. He kind of helped us set this up. Um, Matt was, was a big part of the bow hunting league with the showdown and everything. So if you guys haven't checked the bow hunting league out yet, go ahead and check that out. Ben's on here. He talks a little bit about it and I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into the show. All right, guys, we got Ben from the bow hunting league and Matt Brunswick on. He's going to do a big buck breakdown for you guys. As you can tell, if you're watching the YouTube video from his wall behind him, the guy's got absolute slammers back there. So first, uh, Ben, how are you doing tonight? Man, I'm fantastic. Um, I'm glad to get, get to talk to you guys again. I always love talking to y'all. Yeah, I appreciate you helping us set this up. Um, Brunswick had an incredible year, not on just on top of all the badass seasons in the back, but without the bow hunting league, we, it would have been hard for us to find a guy like Matt to actually get a hold of and talk to. So um, those bow, the bow hunting leagues – getting some of those killers, you know, out in the spotlight a little bit for people to, to learn from. So, um, how you doing tonight, Matt? Doing good. I appreciate you having me on, on tonight. Yeah. I appreciate you spending some time with us, talk a little deer hunting. Like I said, you got, you had an awesome buck kill last year and your wife's killing and you're slamming every season. So you definitely got something figured out. Um, we're going to dive into that here in just a second, but homie, you over there, are you over there kicking? Yeah. I'm over oh, here just – I'm watching the squiggles, bro. That's my only job right now yeah, is watch the squiggles. Got the squiggles. <laughs> it's so weird over here having no squiggles, no time, no nothing. The yeah. TV ain't up. I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at your small-ass phone out there. Yeah, just looking at my small phone like, uh. But, uh, all right, well, let's start this out. Oh, Ben muted himself. He, he can't even talk, but uh, – I'm muted now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I – uh. You, you are on the show, so I want to do a quick shout-out for the Bow Hunting League. Um, give them a rundown of what it is uh, for the people that are listening. If they don't know, can get an idea of what you got going on. All right, so we, we run uh, three contests every year. We do a in-the-yard one-shot 
challenge type thing. You do Facebook Live. We also have the Turkey League, which is going on right now. Uh, we've had 86 birds entered already out of 300 members, uh, competitors. So I think that's a pretty good closing ratio for those turkey hunters, bow hunting. And then we've got coming up starting June 1st, uh, we have the Whitetail League signups. It's a three man team uh, you know, competition, Whitetail League competition. And uh, it's free, totally free. We're approaching $25,000 in sponsors this year. So it's something uh, something for everybody. It's free. You get signed up, bowhuntingleague.com. And uh, that's my plug. Yeah. We like it just because of the people that we get to meet. You know what I mean? We don't ever we don't ever kill shit enough to even <laughs> be on the leaderboard. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're in it just for the, the, the Facebook page and just the people that we get to talk to. So. Yeah, huge. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like the the biggest thing I've got out of out of the group, to be honest with you, is camaraderie. Um, we talked a lot about that with the next level show we did with you guys, and but that's what we're seeing. Like for instance, like with the Turkey League right now, I know of at least uh, at least nine guys that have traded hunts, and those are with people that they they didn't know prior to getting drafted on those teams. So. It's yeah, it's super neat. You just got to get in there. I mean, there's so much going on in there. Just, you know, it's super easy to sign up and get in and talk to guys, you know, yeah. like-minded, like-minded bow hunters. That's what we are. All right. Well, let's get to you, Matt. We got you on. Like I said, we're going to do a kind of just a big buck breakdown with you. First time on the show. We are going to talk about your buck last year a little bit, of course, but, uh, First of all, just let the listeners kind of know who you are and how you got into hunting and what you got going on now. Um, I'm from uh, Northwest Ohio. I was always an outdoors kid uh, growing up. Um, my family didn't really deer hunt at all. Um, so I grew up hunting small game, pheasants, a rabbit. Um, I used, when I started getting a little bit older, my buddy's dad would take us out to the Ohio shotgun season. And that's what got me started into deer hunting. Um, ended up buying a crossbow. Um, Back then, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I remember riding my moped, holding the crossbow, going down the road, sitting in the fence row. I didn't have a headlight on the moped, so I'd have to be home before dark. Never checked. <laughs> I, I, I was clueless. I mean, it's no wonder I never killed anything for years out there. Um, but I think I was 14. I killed my first deer with a crossbow. Um, really got me excited about deer hunting. And I went on a tear about killing these, these does after that. Um, when I was 16, I shot my first buck. He's a little fast crack, uh, 10 point, maybe 80 inches. But from, uh, so that's 2001. So from 2001 to 2008, I just shot does every year. I just filled my tags with does. I just didn't get an opportunity to have bucks. Um, then in 2008, it was the opening day of shotgun season. Uh, when I was with my buddies, it was real cold. We sat in the morning. Uh, we moved to a different property. Uh, pretty fortunate my buddy put me on this property in a, Got pretty lucky, sold him until uh, upper 170s, uh, 15 pointer. So that was my uh, second second buck. But that 2008 season was when I uh, switched to uh, compound bow hunting. I shot a doe with my bow. I really liked the bow hunting aspect. And now that I had a trophy deer under my belt, I decided I was going to start, you know, targeting better deer, even though I'd not shot any deer up to this point with a, with a rack. And uh, the 2009 season, I ended up passing up uh, a 120, which was way bigger than anything I ever shot. And I was fortunate enough, and I got lucky on November 8th, this this big old buck come across, and he's a tail of doe. And I thought he actually had a corn stock hanging off his antler, and it'll be a big old drop tie and make a perfect shot on him. Uh, it was about 45 yards away. Um, I wouldn't even probably take that shot today, but I, I pinwheeled him, made a perfect shot. He ended up going to upper 170s also. So, I mean, boom, boom, I'm, I'm now hooked on hunting big deer. Um, the following season went out. Uh, November 2nd, I ended up killing a uh, 160s, and that was a morning hunt. Uh, I was going to get down on my tree stand, but I just blew on the grunt tube a few times just to see what happened. Um, ended up working. He ended up coming in, made a, uh, probably a 12-yard shot on him. So I had three real good seasons in a row, and then, it, and then that's when it flipped into uh, five long seasons of all-year all hunting for the most part. Um, 2011 was last year I hunted with a gun. Um, I ended up shooting one late season. I think it was the second shotgun season. Um, probably 120s. Eight tags, 2012, 2013. Um, 2014, hunted all year. Didn't kill until January 26th of the following year. Uh, just a few days left in the season. He ended up going like 
127. So pretty good buck for late season. Um, the following year again, hunted long. I ended up targeting this uh, big white eight point in 2015, and I put all my marbles on him. I had some troubles with uh, the neighboring property owner. Um, they'd see me, they're allowed to ride their four wheel on the property, and whenever they saw me, they'd come out their four wheeler and drive around. So it just had to be a pain. Um, that deer ended up disappearing on me, and I ended up killing it, and I get up killing a different deer the late season with my bow. He ended up going 137. Uh, real good deer. And then in 2016, um, he showed back up. He's actually a real big wide one behind me. Uh, 23 and a half inch wide, 170 inch, uh, um, I think 12 point. Just a great deer. And that's, that's one of the biggest frame deer I killed until his last season. So, um, after then, I, I've been strictly bow hunting. Um, 2017, I shot a, a five and a half year old buck. He had a big old dagger on one side. I don't know if you can see him with my right here. This is a big old body deer. I think you can field dress at 240. This is a monster of a, a deer. Um, 2018, I, sh I shot, ended up shooting one, end up going, ended up going 124. Uh, shot him November 8th. I killed a couple of these deer in that, that time frame, that November 2nd to that November uh, 8th window. I've had a lot of encounters or killed a lot of deer in that, that window. Um, 2012, I missed a good one at November 5th, which ended up being the same day I killed this year too. Um, last year was my first year, or 2019, my first year joining the bow hunting league. One of my buddies had asked me to join and uh, ended up killing a, a nice 166 10 point um, October 12th. It was a cold front. Uh, I, I knew it'd be a good morning I got, or a good day. I got set up and I'm killing him. And then this year, obviously, I shot the, the deer I never dreamed I'd even see. I mean, uh, I had a ton of different property last year. Um, somebody cut, stole my, my uh, camera off that property. Uh, the property, I'm changing hands. I lost permission. So I was in hunt for new property in the general area. Uh, I ended up getting a spot a little farther than I thought originally. Um, I didn't know what the property hold. I uh, never hunted that particular area. So I threw a trail camera up. And on my first card pull on July 3rd, uh, that deer was on there. And he was huge for July 3rd. And... I figured he would challenge the, the county record just with how big he looked. And then July 8th, I got a photo in daylight. And then July 13th, I got a series of nighttime photos. And on that last photo, he looked up the camera. I've had this before with Big Deer, and he just disappeared after that. He didn't show back up on camera from July 13th until October 3rd, just gone. And so you can imagine, I am, like, stressing about this deer. My wife heard about it every night. The kids got a lot of ice cream because I I drive up, get we kids ice cream, and we go drive back. <laughs> so I'll be in the minivan, you know, with the binoculars out, with three kids in the back eating ice cream, trying to find this deer. And I look and I look and I never laid eyes on that deer. And uh, and I in those years where I had ate a tag, I had focused on one deer, and I told myself I wouldn't do that again. So so once I didn't see that deer, the deer season arrived. I was like, okay, I'm just going to write that deer off. I don't know where he went. And I began uh, pursuing other deer. And then all of a sudden you start seeing this deer show up on social media. And I, I, I remember sitting in my tree stand and getting sent a picture of this deer. And uh, the next day I went out and I drove around and around until I could line up that photo with the background and figure out where that deer was. And I was like, boom, okay, I'm back in the ball game. He's not that far away. And uh, that's kind of how my season went. I stayed real quiet about this deer. I got a few good buddies I share pictures with, but with this particular deer, I decided I was going to be quiet about it. Um, just kind of keep myself. And just, if I didn't get them, it's all on me then. So, and that's, that was my plan. And that deer would pop up and people would send me like, can you believe this deer's around here? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And uh, so I, I played off. And I, I remember one time they sent the pitch around. They said, they said where it was at. And I would drove that area. And I looked and I looked and I looked and that. There's nothing in the background line up that photo. And I ended up driving back towards where I was at and then was able to line up where that picture was. And whoever took that photo gave false information, obviously, where the deer was actually at. So so when he came through, he came through like October 3rd, the 16th, the 27th. And it was always at night. Just enough to kind of keep me back on him. And every time we're like, like I just gotta sit in a tree. So I go to the property and I just sit in a tree because I I wanted to go hunt. And this property, I tried to hunt in the morning a couple of times and it never worked out. So I only hunted evenings, had real, real good evening access. And uh, I saved my vacation for this time of year. I think I was off for like a 17 or 18 day stretch. So when uh, when the, the fifth rolled around, 
you guys remember the beginning of November was a real warm weather. And actually back when I killed my first real big buck with a bow in 2009, it was really hot that day too. So I was just like, all I have to do is get lucky if a doe brings them out. And I got out, out to my tree stand um, that afternoon. Find up early, it's hot. And I looked over and I saw three does get up. They had heard me, but they didn't see me. They lay back down. So like, oh, good, I got some does in the area. And actually it was a, a doe and her two phones. And I sat there and I had, I think a small buck go through. And I sat there and that was all I saw all night. And then um, 5.2, it was a, about 35 minutes left of shooting time. I looked over and I looked over and I just saw this the big paddle on this one side where Paul mates right there. I knew right away it's him. And where I had my tree stand position, there's a tree that had fallen down and kind of pinched the deer around. And uh, I was, so I knew I picked my opening and he came by and I tried to stop him and he didn't stop. And luckily he stopped on the next opening and he was looking over those that doe was that I'd seen. And so he had no idea I was there and made a perfect shot. He kind of did a little horseshoe and as a crow flies, he probably only went 15, 20 yards. And he stopped, looked back at where that doe was. Then I just watched him tip right over and just saw the rack sticking up. It was one of the craziest things I, 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 I'll ever experience in deer woods. So, so I immediately called my wife first. Um, I had learned early on, I'm very, very blessed that she supports my addiction with this. Um, in the past, I'd always call my buddies first and call her last. And she pointed out that she didn't like that. <laughs> so I've always made a point to call her first since then. And uh, I gave her a call. She knew how much a deer meant to me. Um, I, I'm a pretty diehard uh, bow hunter. I'm constantly driving around looking at deer, changing cameras. And uh, I end up calling my buddy, uh, who always, my buddy TJ, he always helps me drag these deer out. And then uh, back when I got my first photo in the summer, I talked to one of our ODNR officers and said, Hey, look, I'm chasing this deer. This deer looks unbelievable. I don't know how big he is. I think he's over 200. I've never seen a deer that big before on camera. And when I show a picture, he called it Cabela's deer. And so I shot that deer. I called him. I called him, and he didn't answer. And I called him right again. He's like, "Hello." And he's whispering. So he's like, "Deer hunting." I said, "Hey, I shot that big one." And so he ended up calling the Division of Wildlife, and uh, so I wanted everything documented. I didn't want any rumors going around. Every time you hear about a big buck getting shot, there's always I've seen on Facebook a hundred times, and I saw him even on my deer, even though I, I tried to uh, alleviate that. So he came out, took permission, uh, took a photo of my permission slip. Uh, the tree stand, the blood trail, which was real short, and then uh, the recovery. So I had all that documented just in case there's any questions with that. And we brought them back, and I ended up having, I don't know, 20-some people stop my house that night at least to uh, you know, have a few drinks and have some pizza and celebrate. Just, I mean, this deer is just so big for around here. I think you broke the county record by over 37 inches. So just, just a huge deer. Yeah, it's freaking nuts. I seen the picture of that deer. I'm like, what is going on? There's so much to take in in one shot. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Uh, a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. But one thing that I wanted to bring up, which I think a lot of people struggle with, you're only getting night picks of them and you weren't get a ton of picks of them, right? right but yeah. you only had kind of one option. That's the only piece he had that was close to him, correct? Yeah, that was the only piece. And – you know, you get a lot of vacation time, you don't just want to sit there. I mean, I spent so many nights staring at empty fields looking for them and uh, checking cameras all the time. And I was, I was like, you know, I just had to get out in the woods. So there's a few times I went up in the tree stand knowing I wasn't going to shoot anything. I brought my bow with me just in case something really surprised me. But, um, yeah, I was pretty pretty locked on him. And every time I'd start, you know, I need to go hunt something else. I'm not going to kill this deer. You know, I focused on one deer and got burnt a few times. And um, then he showed back up. And then I'd be back on, he disappeared for two weeks, then he showed back up. So I knew for me to kill him, it was going to take the rut and getting, getting pretty lucky. And fortunately, that's what happened. I feel like that's a lot of people that get just nighttime picks. We, we do that a lot. We get nighttime picks of a deer. You know he's in the area. And if you can't move on him or get any closer, I feel like some people just knock that deer off as being unkillable. Right. So, that's like you said, you had to choose, you know, is this deer worth me wasting a whole season on? And we've talked about that on this podcast a lot. You have to decide that early in the year because if you had a season where you're targeting a buck and you don't, you know, don't be, you're not able to fill your tag. It's, it kind of sucks. You're kind of kicking yourself in the butt. Like, man, I shouldn't have been in there after this deer. So 
that's not like something you were committed to right out the rip, which I think you kind of have to do. Um, and then, you know, just do whatever you can to try to make it happen. And you're only getting nighttime picks. He's random as hell, but you're in there hunting. Just like you said, you never know what happened. And he just yeah. happened to be in there. So, yeah, there'll be times where I'm like, this deer's not killable. I need to go sit somewhere else. I sit somewhere else. And then I check cameras, boom, he'd be back. So now I'd be back on this year 100% disappear for a week or two and it's like yeah you need to get back and stand somewhere and so I was, I was really back and forth with this deer and I mean we just my family in general my wife ended up shooting her best deer this year too and um, my the funny story my daughter she was six at the time and uh, I told her I'd take her out deer hunting I ordered one of these uh muddy bulb blinds to take out I wanted to take my wife and I we invested on one of those to take the kids out and uh well it got delayed because of COVID it never came and so I just ended up never taking her out. I thought she had forgot about it. And I got home one day and my mother-in-law was babysitting. And she goes, I got to tell you what Bristol said. I go, what's that? She goes, Grandma, did your dad ever disappoint you? And I was like, what? <laughs> goes, Daddy said he's going to take me deer hunting, but he never did. And I already shot my deer. And I was like, oh, just hit me right in the heart. Like, she really wants to go. And that's one thing nice with uh, Ohio allowing crossbows, especially with uh, someone her age. She never shot me before. And I took her out in the backyard to have her practice, and she was just, you know, hitting bullseye. So I'm like, well, we'll take her out. The next day, she went out and shot, shot a deer on her first hunt. And uh, it was a, a little five-point uh, – we're going to shoot the first deer that came in. It'll be a little five-point deer and half-year-old. And he just come trotting on in and stopped. And she shot, made a great shot on him. Um, she, she takes about two minutes to aim at a deer, it seems like. It took forever. But she ended up making a really good shot and uh, knocking it down. And we got home, and she's like, Daddy. I go, what? She goes, you hunt all the time. I went one time and got one. I'm like, oh, I'm going to put her on some random fence like I did growing up and then, you know, let her get the real taste of it for a little bit. Yeah. Go <laughs> set on a fence roll, not have anybody guide you at all. Yeah. <laughs> that was like me just out there walking around. Lucky I seen any deer to be able to kill. I'm just out there walking around trying to learn what I'm doing, scaring everybody. If, oh. if there was a guy who knew what he was doing that hunted the same ground as me when I was young, on public, that guy hated my cuts. <laughs> I walked every inch of that thing a couple times a year. <laughs> Especially I was when a guy that was like, oh, I'll hunt 10 minutes here, and then I'm like, oh, I'll move up another 20 yards. <laughs> yeah, I just remember when I first started, like, I didn't have a whole lot of areas, and, you know, I'd go to the Walmart, buy the little apple spray, and think, like, that was going to bring the deer in, try all the gadgets. Now, it's, I, I use, very seldom use any kind of calls or anything. I just – I really watch um, – cold fronts it's the main thing i target on nowadays and uh, obviously time of year i mean that that end of october to the 15th of november is time and stand and fortunately i've been on my job long enough now or built up vacation where i can take off those two three weeks if i need to yeah that's nice we're working on our third week right now that third week's going to be be able to give a week for the family and two weeks for hunting and then hopefully i'm hoping i can cheat like three days for the family and a couple days for turkeys because Illinois turkey season's atro atrocious. So being able to hunt two nice days during your tag other than the weekend would be killer. Right. So. Yeah, turkey's one thing I never got into. Um, I'm basically strictly deer and nothing else. Uh, Year-round, I'm checking cameras. I mean, or listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos. I mean, every day we're doing something deer hunting related to the house and my wife bought some uh, earbuds because I listen to your guys' podcast and other podcasts. We travel, and I mean, it's just what we do every day. That's what we live and breathe. Yeah, we're the same, man. We're we put we we podcast every week, so we're always got talking to someone about deer. Then we're always planning on getting some shit done, but <laughs> never get anything <laughs> accomplished. It seems like, but we got we got a lot of plans. But one thing I wanted to talk hit you on is when you're going through your years of transition there was some years there where you did struggle for a couple of years you know you were targeting a certain buck and then it seems like you came back and had some success is there anything that you changed throughout that time that you think might have altered your success or did you just were you more of uh just targeting an area instead of a buck or what were you doing uh just a couple of things i mean one of the years was on me i made a miss at 25 yards a shot i should have made um, at November 5th, 2012. I mean, I'll always remember that. Um, but a couple more, I just, I was hunting unrealistic deer. 
I had pictures of deer at nighttime, um, never got in daylight. And I think I was hunting unkillable deer. So I ended up eating a tag and that almost burnt me this season because I was started to write that deer off and, you know, get back in the woods. So, um, part of it too is, you know, I used to, after gun season, never hunt. And then, um, I started learning more and just the more you look, more you're out there, the more you learn. And, you know, I learned, you know, the early season, getting on the food, um, October, watching the cold fronts. And then, uh, obviously once you're coming up to the rut and rut time, just time and seeing at that point, and then late season, you're back to food sources. So, and unpressured area. If you can find an unpressured bedding area, that's, that's where you need to be. Yeah. That seems to be I, a key. Yet. You got something, homie? Yeah. You can go ahead and finish there, and I'm going to jump to something else. Go ahead. Um, I want to circle back to your October 12th kill last year. I don't know why, but I'm always very intrigued with October, early October, super early October kills. Um, I actually remember this day very well because there was um, a cold front that Cody and I went into our best spot and um, it was, we had a very, very uneventful hunt. But um, it's weird how you remember those days that you're all jacked up for a cold front October and it was like a, a 35 plus degree drop here. Yeah, and, it, um, it was substantial. Yeah, it was, it was huge. So um, I know you said that you focus on cold fronts there during that time frame. Is there anything else that you really key on or is it just mostly hunting the weather at that point? I put a lot of, um, a lot of trust in my cameras. Um, I don't run a ton of cameras, probably a ton of sound, but I run like 12 cameras, um, roughly around there, 10, 12. And, um, my cameras had shown that this buck was, uh, in the area and he was, Oh, an hour, half an hour after dark. So I know I knew it wasn't too far. And I thought, man, if we could just get a good cold front, we can get him up out of bed. And um, actually, the, the section I was hunting wasn't a huge block of timber, so I didn't think he could possibly be that far away from me. And when I saw that that cold front coming in, and I've been with my wife long enough, and she's like, I see there's a cold front coming. Uh, you know, you're gonna be going deer hunting. She just understands, and you know, I'm pretty fortunate on that end. So if uh, the stars align, we've got the cold front coming, got the good wind. Um, I'll, I'll be sure to be in that tree. If you got something going on, we're going to get it changed around. Yeah, that was something I kind of did a little bit different this year is I might have gave up my Sunday or something, but I was able to get out on at least a Tuesday or a Thursday night during the week and um, had some better hunts than I would have probably on that Sunday where if, if I would have just went because it was Sunday, you know, the weekend. Um, but instead, I would flip-flop the Sunday night hunt for a Tuesday night hunt after work. I knew I was going to have a light load at work. So I'd be able to jet out right at time and uh, get out there. So um, I definitely agree with that. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and honestly, you know, you, with me, I'm always looking for the, the next spot or the, or the next, next thing. Um, I'm not really, I know you guys are into gadgets and stuff. Um, I've shot the same broadhead since the first day. I haven't changed. I've only owned two compound bows my entire life. Um, in the last, I was going through them in the last 13 years, I've killed 11 times and of those 11 bucks, you know, they've come on 10 different properties, 10 different landowners. So, um, always knocking on different doors, trying to get a different spot to, to get into. And, um, what I found here lately is if, you know, if you're saying you're strictly bow hunting, that, that really helps around here. Um, seems like, unfortunately there's some landowners get burnt on gun season sometimes and they'll get a bad rap. And so, and, and I like getting it done before gun season anyway, it makes life a lot less stressful too <laughs> yep. yeah that's that's a goal of ours every year going into it at least have one one buck down between the two of us and you know at least one guy's kind of got some pressure off of him but every year we're we're right down to the wire every time yeah that, that's where you guys are lucky you have that second buck tag but honestly i, I hope ohio keeps the one buck tag i feel like it helps uh our, our uh, deer herd um we're gonna have more trophy caliber deer and I'm okay with shooting one deer. Ohio can kind of keep that going for sure. Um, I would like to start looking at other states. You know, honestly, before the bow hunting league from the showdown, I had never uh, went hunted public ground before. Never went out of out of my little circle around my house here. And uh, honestly, when I first got invited, I was like, Do I really want to go down to Florida and shoot a, a deer that's going to be big? It's going to be 115 inches. And I was kind of hesitant at first, but like, you know, I'm going down there for the experience and Man, I'm so glad I went because the experience is exactly what I, what I got. And I mean, I met a lot of cool guys down there, a lot of like-minded people. And, 
it was one of, one of the coolest experiences I've been a part of. And if I ever get a chance to go, I'll absolutely be there again. It seemed like a pretty cool deal getting, to, you know, kind of get semi live updates through the Facebook group and the coveted snap group. If you're able to get into that, but um, <laughs> being able to see some of the stuff you guys had going on down there, it looked like a ton of fun. Um, everybody's saying, you know, oh, nobody see anything over here, but these guys saw a couple small ones and uh, this looked like a bunch of fun with a bunch of guys. And I'm sure you guys ate like Kings down there. Oh yeah. Uh, Brad Osborne, he hooked us up. He cooked for us and he, he had a nice spread almost every night for us, so that was much appreciated. That damn bike, the damn bike video had me dying. <laughs> I was loving that shit, man. <laughs> we bike in a lot to our pieces, so it was hilarious to see someone else doing it. And you're like, oh, shit, it's just biking. But then you start, you're like, this sucks, man. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. But you know, you guys kept that. taking breaks and shit. I was dying. I was like, this is perfect. The oh, one who had the tiny bike got the shaft. It got the hell of shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be uh, Matt Powell. He yeah. sacrificed for us. He had, he had the shaft, got the shaft on that one. <laughs> he got the shaft on the bike. But, man, that was freaking awesome when you guys – and I could just tell by that snap group, you know, that, how much fun you guys were having, whether you killed or not. Just oh, yeah. That's, everybody wants to kill, but having that kind of stuff is just as important, especially on a trip because – I bet you no one really – that's the thing about hunting. When you're hunting your hometown, you're like, man, I got a good chance to go out and really kill something. But if you're going to Florida, you're you're kind of already like, ah, man, I might, it might happen, but a pretty good chance it's not going to, you know. So you're already into it a little bit stress-free. And I think when the stress is off, that's why we, we – when it just becomes more fun. That's like with us. If we could kill in October, we would have the funnest November – we just be riding, you know, we both killed in October, dude, it'd be insane out there. We would be feeling like Kings, but yeah, one year we'll make it happen. Two guys in one tree is making it hard, hard for yeah, us both to get a buck down. Yeah. I've definitely got an uphill battle hunting together every time. Um, but that's, what's cool about what you, what you're saying kind of linked up a lot of the things with the showdown. Everybody that was there had an epic year. So you know, it was just kind of the grand finale, like, hey, let's talk about all the stuff we accomplished. And it, it was neat because you, I got to see everybody make these sacrifices to get down there. I mean, Brunswick, um, Garris, you know, all of them, they're all making sacrifices to travel long distances to get down to Florida to go shoot six pointers, you know, and it, it was just really, it was a lot of fun. Um, and and I, I hope that a lot of these guys get qualified again, you know, because it's, you know, that's, I could imagine having more fun with a bunch of strangers again like that. And it, it was like the, February. Yeah. And it was late <laughs> I mean, as it was, hell too. The yeah. run's kicking down here, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. And actually our first day of the season wasn't open. There was a little break in the season. So we all went out fishing and I know Ben had a good time out there. I don't know if you guys get any Snapchats of that. But, yeah. Uh, we yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I was good for about 30 minutes. I caught, I think I caught four fish, and then I was in the, uh, on the bench the whole rest of the time sick. <laughs> I, 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 was, hey, I wasn't the only one that was sick, but I'm pretty sure I was the worst. Uh, what, was it, was it like, uh, was it the sickness like I, I would your classic, or was it a different kind of sickness? <laughs> It, I was uh, I was 100% ready to go fishing if that tells you anything and, and I know it wasn't it wasn't the Iowa beer classic by any means. Oh, okay, all right. I was wondering that sickness will sneak up on you and take you down. I think it's a whole new level out there. <laughs> you gotta watch out for that. Homie crosses state lines, blacking out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, pretty much, pretty much. Oh. Yeah, I was expecting to see y'all hang around a lot longer that one day on a Saturday, but I think y'all had, had enough. <laughs> yeah, homie, homie slept all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he? Wasn't oh, feeling it. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting up there, man. I'm, yeah. I'm three, four years older than you. <laughs> I went hard. <laughs> I went too hard. That's the problem. <laughs> Didn't pace myself. How old are you? I'm. I'm oh, damn near I'm thirty. A, I'm gonna be 31. 
Oh, yeah, three years. <laughs> three years. I fucking can't do math. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm definitely right. the oldest one in here. Hell, I'm 37. You still got that soft ass face, so looking young as hell. <laughs> I shaved last night. I had to soften the seat up, so looking real good right now. Yeah, oh yeah, Ben's got the <laughs> softest seat in the game. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let's get back to some deer. People just clicked it and they just turned it off. Yep, we're done. So you uh. You shot your giant last year. What? How are you going to go into this year? What's your plan? Are you just going to try to find a – are you going to step up your game and only shoot bigger deer now, or are you just going to go for whatever's out there? Um, I don't I don't think – honestly, there's going to be deer that size in our county for a long time again. I'm oh, yeah, you're not going to shoot anything bigger, but I know when I shot my giant, people were like, well, you're only going to shoot like 160s, 170s? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot whatever I whatever I can get my hands on, you know what I mean. So I was just wondering, kind of what what mindset you were in. Um, for for me, it actually happened at a great time because you know I, I've been pretty fortunate to kill some good deer with my bow. And um, when my daughter killed her first deer, she saw my deer season. My boy, he just turned five. He start he's saying he's want to go. So uh, I think I'm gonna start transitioning more, trying to get kids on the deer. Um, you know, I got three kids. I've always said if I can just get one of my three to catch the bug that I have. You know, have a lifetime hunt, lifetime hunting buddy to go with me. That'd be pretty cool. Um, my wife, um, she's probably luckier than I am. Um, in her in her last uh, few hunts, uh, two years ago, January twentieth, twenty or twenty twenty, uh, we just went out hoping to get like two and a half year old and um, a five and a half year old eight point. Ended up going one hundred forty two inches. Came in and she ended up uh, killing that with her crossbow. And then this season, um, we went out January eighteenth again, our late season. And I'm pretty fortunate. She lets me go hunt first, do my thing. And then uh, if uh, my tags are burnt, then uh, we'll go out together. And I was able to film her shooting a, a mid-150s uh, eight-point this year. Just just a great, great deer. So we've been uh, really fortunate here lately. But moving forward, it's going to be more about the kids. And um, I'll still be chasing big bucks. I mean, I'll still be running my cameras. And, and uh, if I can get on one, I'll definitely get on one. But if I, if, I, if I eat a tag next year, I'm, I'm going to be okay with it. Um, and if my kids are successful or as long as they're still having fun and enjoying it, um, that works for me. So, yeah, it's been a roller coaster since I shot that deer. I've got to meet a lot of people because of it. Um, I got to go to the showdown for the Boeing League because of it. Um, I was actually in the Quest Hunt tournament also. I'm going down to Missouri for their banquet because of it being uh, that deer. So that deer has actually got me connected to a lot of different people. So, this came with his highs and it's also came with his lows. Um, someone went to one of my properties and ended up stealing a bunch of my cameras and breaking uh, some other property I had out there, cutting tree sand straps. So, you know, there's always going to be someone out there that's upset with you and jealous. And it's unfortunate, but it kind of comes to the territory. Never had anything like that happen before until this year, so I can't help but think it's connected <clears throat> to that year. Yeah, like that. you're going to have to you're gonna have to keep going out in the minivan because you're going to have people – telling you where you're hunting before they you even know where you're hunting well, i see you're hunting over here tonight well, i'm not real sure but i might be there <laughs> that's what happened to me they're like oh you're gonna be on the west side tonight i'm not real sure what i got going on <laughs> and I'll, I'll give a um dan infault he's talked about that on his podcast and his shows before about you know as i break raccoons bumper stickers it actually kind of gave me the idea of going off the kids in a minivan and like people drive right by me and I just think I'm just a guy out with his kids getting ice cream. Yeah. And we'll think anything of me. So I made that mistake of glassing off the road and then people stop. What are you doing? And then they see, see my setup. They're like, Oh yeah. And then two days later, do you see that giant out there? Yeah. I've been watching it for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Oh no, there's a giant out there. Really? Oh, I have no idea. I ain't seen nothing out in that bean field. Oh, but yeah, keep the low key vehicle. So, Ben, what what's your plan for this year? How many states you gonna hunt? So I drew uh, Iowa last year, so I won't have I won't have that trip. Um, I'm actually gonna try to focus more on Kentucky um, and try to really try to stay around the house more. You know, try to stay more local. You know, fortunately, I've I'm two and a half hours from Ohio about two hours from Illinois, two hours from Kentucky. So I can, if I get on, you know, get in, uh, 
good idea to go down to Kentucky and run down and hunt Fort Knox or something. I can't. And, uh, and that's, you know, mostly, you know how it is. Mostly I hunt mostly public ground around my house and I do have one really good spot in Tennessee to hunt. Uh, but really, I mean, this is all connections and networking stuff that I've, you know, anytime I'm in a different state, it's because of somebody else's grace, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, my, my big thing that I'm, uh, I'm always looking forward to is, you know, the week before gun opens here in Indiana, I always had deer camp here and, uh, and Brunswick's one of the guys that's been invited. And, um, we've got, we've got some other buddies that, that come up every year, you know, Powell always comes up. He shoots the biggest deer in camp, of course. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's just what happens. And, uh, but it's, but it's a good time. And, and like, like I said, yeah, just kind of staying with a lot of status quo stuff. And we were, um, we were talking about in the, in the moderator thread today, um, James Meissner was, was saying stuff about it, like how many states you guys hunting and stuff. And I, I think, you know, I'll have, I will have at least one state, you know, out of the norm that I'll hunt, but I do, I do look forward to trying to stay home and trying to kill because i didn't kill a buck in indiana last year and I, I well, you're to... gone the whole damn time, the whole time. <laughs> snapchat yeah. group i was like this dude's in the sixth state in like three and a half weeks i'm like yeah you're like i traveled a lot <laughs> that snap when you're like i don't care if it's an eight pointer that's a hundred inches it's dying and then you go <laughs> Past that, past an eight pointer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Like I was, I was so <laughs> hell, bent, hell bent on on shooting whatever I saw, and I I saw one. And I was like, he's he's nice, and I just yeah. like I, I'd take a little video of him walking by me or something. Yeah, I'm like, like, I, thought, I was like waiting for the shot to happen. Like, okay, he's gonna shoot it. Here comes the snap. Yeah. And he's like, I passed him. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm killing whatever comes out. When <laughs> yeah, the pregame, the pregame snap. I was like, well, he's serious. He yeah, he's serious, serious to killing yeah. something. <laughs> if a turtle like, walks past there, that sucker's yeah. in trouble. This guy, yeah, is nothing out there is safe. <laughs> well, y'all, y'all remember the weather I was hunting in? I mean, it was brutal. It was yeah. the last. Uh, it was the last weekend of of Ohio, Ohio and. Man, I mean, I had, I was layered up, and I mean, fortunately, I had a really good guy to hunt with, and uh, you know, he made sure he got me around and stuff. But you know, I didn't have to sit all day or anything stupid, you know. But um, but we, yeah, it's it 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 got pretty cold, and I I think that may have had as much of an impact on it as uh, you know, my I don't know my my standards because i was thinking you know if i shoot this 100 inch deer and uh, i gotta drag him out and it's nine degrees i don't think i'm gonna like that too much yeah i gotta gut him there's <laughs> nothing worse than cold hands after you gut something you're like ah, man. yeah you're done uh, yeah homie what where we at over there i ain't got no uh we, no we're numbers. at 42 we're at 42, 42. all right well yeah said well, all right Brunswick, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners that, you know, any advice or tip that you could give them to maybe step up their game a little bit this year? I mean, the easiest one I'd say is join the bow hunting league. It's free. There's no reason to join. Start following their page. Um, there's a lot of experienced hunters on there. They always give them different pointers. And uh, it's just fun to see how other people are doing. And, you know, you'll see a cold front come through and a bunch of kills. And um, my number one focus is, is, is weather. I mean, I always key on the weather. You know, weather kind of trumps everything weather and time of year if you get the weather and you get you know the time of year during the rut you better be in the stand so weather and time of year for is what i key on uh before we wrap up your big buck you did get this deer aged um can you kind of go through that process of getting that done and um how it correlated also with some infinite information that your neighbors had given you yeah so um Obviously, when I, when I got this permission for this spot, I didn't, I didn't necessarily know this deer was there. I, I knew it was a decent area. Um, but I started getting pictures of this deer, and once I killed him, I, I started talking to a guy something uh, a ways, a pretty fair, a fair ways away from me. And um, he had been watching deer for four years. He had pictures of it for four years. He actually missed it the year before. 
And um, he told me, he goes, that deer's going to be six and a half years old. And uh, he showed me the photos. And I just couldn't believe how much that deer had grown over the years. Just crazy what the jump he made from five to six. I mean, he was a good deer at five, but man, he made a huge jump to six. Yeah, I sent, yeah. I sent the deer into deerage.com um, and uh, I'm getting the results back. Came back as a six and a half year old deer. So for around here, it's that's it's hard for deer to get age around here. There's a lot of hunting pressure. Um, so I just I've I'm, I've shot that dagger buck back there he was i said his teeth and he came back at five and a half but it's just hard for deer to reach that age around here so it's just crazy and uh, that guy's actually kind of became a friend he was a class act about it um he came over saw the deer and um i know you guys you said you worked for the railroad and uh he said he also did too and it had not been for work he probably would have killed this deer because it was in front of his tree stand that same day but he was stuck at work so you know the card just fell right for me i got really lucky and very fortunate and uh you know, just one of those deer of many lifetimes. Yeah, I, I think whenever whenever I kill a buck from here on out, I'm going to get him aged just just because I, I kind of nerd out on that type of stuff. Uh, just like talking with Bill there, Spartan Forge, like I get into that and I get I get deep in the in the rabbit hole and get lost. And um, you also think one thing, and half the time it's you're you're close but you're not really spot on and um doing that i really think they they do a damn good job of, of nailing it um i talked or i listened to uh them on trail cam radio and um they did a podcast with them and uh it's very very good uh podcast and very informational and uh it's amazing how they can they can nail it every time so um yeah i, I knew that you did that and i just wanted to hear a little bit about your personal experience there yeah i think it's just Great knowledge is another thing to learn, you know, as these deer get older, they change their habits. Um, like the five and a half year old uh, dagger buck back there I shot. Um, when I first started hunting that property, the first year he was a mature deer and he was all broken up. His eye was all puffed up the, that year. And I knew he, he was running deer off. The next year he showed up and he was one inch bigger. I mean, he didn't change at all. He saw a big dagger on the one side and I was like, man, if I see that deer, I'm going to kill that deer. And uh, I knew he was mature the year before and I went out to, I set, I set a couple cameras uh, deep in the woods. Uh, I'll try to leave one or two soak over the year and kind of retain that information, see what, what I learned from the, that bedding area. Um, the, back on the October 25th, 2017, there's a cold front. And being in October, I'm like, I'm going to go in, hunt, and pull that camera that I had soaking back there. I just want to see if anything else is going on. And my rut vacation was just kicking off. And so I went in and, um, I ended up passing that big eight point. My wife ended up killing, you know, uh, a couple years later. And, uh, he came in after that and, um, uh, gave me a nice 20, 20 yard shot and I uh, got him. So, um, I, when I, and then I sent his teeth in. So I knew he'd be at least five and a half. And that's what he came back as. So hmm. just kind yeah, of cool that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very cool. I think and it kind of adds a little bit to the story there. Um, uh, I lost what I was going to say. I like it because it helps you, you know, try to train. I think this deer is four by the way he looks. It's hard to know until you get an age, and then it comes back as a five-year-old or a six or a three, and you're like, well, you learned something, you know. You might need to tweak what you're thinking when you're looking at deer. So I think I, I'm terrible at aging deer. I'm always off by a year, it always seems like. Um, I seem like I'm always, I'm always younger. I think I just like, man, it's probably just like a two year old, but it's just, you know, or a solid three year old, but most of the time it seems like I've been younger in the past, but. All right. I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> just like Matt said, your, your, how your buck, um, blew up, you know, from five to six there. And then, you know, you got a four year old and he doesn't grow one inch and, and that's happened to us a couple of times. You're like, all right. I got a really solid mature buck next year going to be an absolute stud. And then he comes back and he's the same damn thing. You're like, bro, did you even shed your antlers this year? Cause you are the exact same. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy it's, how, how some of these deer you think are going to blow up and they don't change at all. No, another, nothing. Another deer you think, you know, I don't think he's going to change much and he blows up like crazy. So exactly. I mean, your deer obviously at five still had a bunch of junk and trash and yeah. you know, he still had it all going on, but man, yeah, I've got a buck and that's 
that I've had in my yard since we moved here. We moved mm-hmm. here. And I've had him, I've seen him grow four racks. And um, this this deer is 120 inches maybe. And the reason I know it's him is because he's got a big split in his ear. And I've got several different bucks that I've seen in my yard. And he's the only one that looks like him anyway. But his the split is like real pronounced. And uh, I've found two of his sheds in my yard i mean like the deer's like in my yard a lot <laughs> and, but like you said i mean yeah sometimes they just don't do mm-hmm. anything i mean he's been the same thing since we moved here well it's because you're yeah, feeding bird bird seed. like that yeah <laughs> bird seed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah need to get him That's on a... some protein <laughs> yeah some, yeah and some real, that bird seed. <laughs> some real next level tasty as hell yeah. though yeah what well, yeah 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 he's He's fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple of bucks like that. You're like, man, this if I feel like if they're an eight pointer and they're mature, that's pretty much an eight pointer for the rest of their damn life. They yeah. might throw a weak ass G four just to interest you that much more, but he's gonna be an eight pointer forever. <laughs> right. So all right, well, I think we'll wrap it up here. Appreciate you guys coming on. Appreciate you helping line this up, Ben. Um, kind of short notice on you guys, but uh, I'm glad we got – we wanted to get you on anyway, so glad we got to chit-chat with you. Um, yeah. Hopefully yeah. Yeah. hopefully you guys can both top the seasons that you had last year. I don't know if that's possible for either of you to do, honestly, yeah. but uh, I really hope you guys can. Um, if you kill a bigger one, Brunswick, I don't know what <laughs> – if I'm able to kill early, I'll be looking out of state. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's, hey, I tell you right now, he's coming west. Yeah. He's in, I've got a spot for him and everything. So, he's nice. – he, you know, it's it's cool because there's so many – last thing I'll say, there's so many guys that are, like, quality in the group. You know, you, you, you get all these different levels, but he's definitely one of them. I want to make sure you all got to meet him because – um, I think a lot of him, and, and he just—he's got a extremely honorable profession. He's family man. You know, he anything he kills, he deserves it. And and that's and, and I just want to make sure you guys got to meet Matt. Yeah, well, we appreciate you coming on, man. It's been an awesome chatting with you. All right, guys. Well, there is another Legend of the Woods episode, Big Buck breakdown um, of an absolute giant in Ohio. Really like that. It was just. I know the guy was on a small property. He didn't mention that. I don't think he wanted to mention it. Maybe just so people didn't know exactly where he was at. I don't blame him, but I know it was a very small property. Um, And I know that he was kind of using social media as a, to an advantage, like he was saying in this. So I think that's a great tip. You start seeing pictures of bucks. That's the people are sharing and you can match up the backgrounds like that. Yeah. I've done that in multiple people's picks that I've seen. I'm like, I know exactly (laughs) where this dude's at. You are a savage yeah. when it comes to I seen yeah. that maple leaf three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I lean to that tree. I know. There yeah. won't be anything close to my house. I know exactly <laughs> where you're at that. Or when that guy found that deadhead, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, there, that's right there. Guarantee that. That's funny. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so that that's an advantage that you can use, you know something that a lot of people don't think about being able to find that deer. And then also all, all nighttime pictures and still in there hunting him and was able to get it done. So, and he said that, you know, he only hit, he hunted there a couple times in the morning and realized that it wasn't going to work. So he didn't go back in there and ruin it. He only went back in there in the evening when he knew that he could get in and not, not bump a bunch of deer. So. And the other thing, thing is, I would say the other thing is he had this deer in July and then he was gone until October. So. I mean, your hopes aren't really high until you start getting back in October, which, I mean, it's cool to get the big velvet picks and stuff, but you can't kill them in July. Yeah, if you so, had a 252 on cam in right. July. I mean, you, be just like he said, it's stressful. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then he's gone. And then yeah. he's gone, so it's even like, I mean, we kind of had that. 300 in velvet. That deer's like, <laughs> you're like, I don't even know how to add up all these inches. Dude's just big as shit, you know? Right, <laughs> right. I mean, we kind of had the same thing. We had that one, like, it was literally almost the same dates, July 3rd and July 8th. And then yeah. he's gone until just right before season, just enough to keep you interested, just like him. He's always yeah. show up and then be a couple weeks, show up. Yeah. So, 
just enough to keep you coming back. Yeah. We can't get into those freak nasties, all the non-typical stuff going on. We got – Magnum's got a little bit, but not yeah. crazy. Maybe this year he'll just I would say this, look like Medusa this, out there. Yeah, we, we need the five to six jump that he had. It would we need be a Medusa. Right. We're looking yeah, for a Medusa. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, like we always say, we love you. Appreciate you listening. Hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of the mid of the mid of the uh, the deer season lull because deer season's you know all year round, but this is the lull. This yep. is like the October lull for deer season, you know. And uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in and listening to another Legend of the Woods. Um, we're gonna keep pumping out the content and uh, hopefully keep filling your guys' ear holes. Always try to do the right thing, leave a legacy, and Whitetail Legacy is out. Love you, Grant. Sorry, we're such <laughs> fuck faces. <laughs>